Hi, it's Dre Griggs with Obsidian Wisdom. Today we answer the question, what are three sources of retirement income? There are a variety of potential income sources that we could talk about for a very long time, but we're gonna focus on the three main sources of income that the majority of Americans have. The number one is social security. The majority of people, their retirement is funded by social security. Now granted, the average social security check is about $1,700 a month. That's about $20,000 a year, which is right above the poverty line. Now on the one hand, the social security program does give cost of living adjustments. They take a look at the numbers. So over the last couple of years when we've had high inflation, we've seen cost of living adjustments of 5.9% and 8.7%. Currently 2024, the cost of living adjustment is going to be 3.2% which is not as much as most people were probably expecting. We understand on the one hand that inflation is going down year to year, but it doesn't change the fact that inflation is still pretty high and it's much higher than the 3.2% adjustment that we're looking for in 2024. That is why social security alone tends to not be enough for us to be able to fund our retirement. The second source of retirement income for the majority of Americans is gonna be some form of an employer-sponsored retirement plan. There are a variety of plans that you can have. The majority of Americans are going to have a 401k as their employer-sponsored plan. Some of the benefits include the ability to defer taxes today, where you have the ability to grow your money tax-free. As long as you don't take it out early and you follow all the rules of the required minimum distribution, as long as you check off all the boxes and make sure you're paying attention, it tends to be a very favorable strategy for those that are worried about their tax bill today and not as much about what the tax bill will be in retirement. You also have the extra benefit where most 401k plans have some sort of an employee match, which I often recommend, even if I know little to nothing about your personal retirement plan, if there's free money available, it's usually a good idea to take the free money because that is a 100% return on your investment, right? If you have a 2% match, if you put 2% in and your employer puts 2% in, that is a 100% return before anything happens. If your employer has a 3 4 or 5% match, I normally tell people, find out what the match is and match it. Now, some of your employers don't give a one for one and they may give a half a percent for every percent that you give. I would still say a 50% return on your investment is an acceptable return. So I would still say, even if your employer is a little stingy and they're only giving you half a percent for every percent that you put in, I still believe that that is a good strategy for you to take advantage of. Now, for most people, when it comes to whether I should invest more than that, that's where it gets a little bit different. Oftentimes your 401k plan doesn't have a lot of customization. There's not many choices on how to allocate your investments. Also, the fees tend to be a little bit higher in a 401k plan. So for most people outside of the match, it doesn't make as much sense for them. Now, if it does for you and your personal situation, great, go for it. But keep in mind in 2023, there are limits on how much you can put into a 401k. As of right now, you can invest $22,500 as an individual if you're under 50 years old. And once you're 50, you're allowed to invest up to $30,000 a year. That amount also, just like Social Security, goes up a little bit each year. Last year it was $20,500, which is about a $2,000 increase year over year. But because of those limits, it often makes sense for people to have a third stream of retirement income as well, where you're not focused solely on your social security. You're not really focused only on your employer sponsored plans, but you also have your own investment account. For most people, it makes sense for them to have some sort of personal savings and investments of their own. I go over in different videos, the importance of having a diversified portfolio, but it's also important to be diversified from a tax perspective as well. You don't want all of your retirement being funded with a 401k and pre-tax investment because you're going to have to pay taxes on that money when you retire. And it's going to be taxes, ordinary income, whatever that tax rate is at the time. As a result, it often makes sense to diversify most people's funds where they have some money that's being in pre-tax where it's going to be taxed in retirement and they have other money that's already been taxed today and it won't be taxed in retirement or at least it'd be in a more favorable tax bracket. And for that reason, it often makes sense for people to have the money invested in personal savings or investments. When it comes to investments, you can have real estate investments, you can have stock market investments, or you can even have business ventures where you have businesses that you're purchasing and they generate a certain income for you. Now, all of these are considered riskier investments because they all have the ability to go to $0 where you could lose everything that you have. And because of that, we often have to have a portion of our money put in personal savings. Personal savings could be anything like a money market account, or different bonds where there's a set amount of money that you're going to be given. Think of it like a savings account. If you put $100 in your savings account, you wouldn't expect it to be $90 tomorrow. You would expect to have $100 and maybe one cent. That would be the return that you get on your investments. Not a great return, which may lead into the issue of being able to keep up with inflation. But again, you don't have all of your money in any one of these investments. There is pros and cons to everything. If you have all of your money 
in the 401k, there's some risk there. If you have all your money in the stock market, there's some risk there. If you have all your money in a business or real estate, again, there's risk there. But there's also risk if you have all your money in a personal savings account. If you have to keep up with inflation, and you know that inflation can be very nasty, if you're losing 8% because inflation is at 9%, but you're only getting 1% in your investment, well, that means every single year your money is in a savings account, you are losing. But if you're invested in something that at a minimum keeps up with inflation, well, now I'm able to say, all right, well, I have some of my safe money. I have some money that keeps up with inflation. I have some of my aggressive investment. And I'll put a link in the video where we talk about some of the best withdrawal strategies. And this one is the bucket strategy. It's the idea that I have my money in three different buckets. I have my safe bucket. That's gonna be the money that I'd spend anytime between like a year to maybe two years. That's the money I'm gonna need to use. And as a result, it needs to be safe. It's probably in a money market account or a CD. And my second bucket is going to be my more moderate bucket. And then my third bucket is going to be my home run bucket because that's my long-term investment. I'm not touching that money for at least 10 years. And because I'm not touching it for 10 years, I have the ability to invest it more aggressively. My moderate bucket, while I only have three to five years, maybe eight years on the upper end, I have to make sure that money is moderately invested because I may have to dip into that to replenish my everyday fund of one to two years of expenses. And one of the benefits of having your money set up that way is now you're not concerned about something that may happen over a three month span or even a one year span because you have your money set aside to where I can allow my money to regrow, where I don't have to take it out in a bad market. I can take it out when the market returns to normal, which is obviously the comfort that we all look for when it comes to retirement. We want to make sure that we're not going to run out of money and we want to make sure that we also get to enjoy our time. There are a variety of other sources of retirement income. Some may work part time, others may have an annuity, but it's important to have multiple streams of income because every income performs well in one environment and it doesn't perform the best in the other environment. But if you're going to be retired for 30 to 40 years, you're probably going to come across a bunch of different scenarios and you want to make sure that you have something that performs well in every economic circumstance. If you found value in this video, I ask for you to like and subscribe continue receiving valuable insights on how to solve generational wealth through strategic retirement planning. Until next time, stay safe and enjoy life.